Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about color. So what is color? If somebody was going to ask you what color is, what would you say? Well, you'd probably say color is, you know, the color of things like a blue shirt, a red hat, a yellow flower, or the green leaf. But what is color? What actually is color? So color is light. And this was discovered by Isaac Newton. And mind you, he wasn't the first to theorize this, but he was the first to prove this. So what he did was he put a prism in front of a narrow beam of white light. And out the other side came the color spectrum. But his detractors suggested that maybe the colors are coming from the prism itself and not from the white light. So he debunked this idea again by placing another prism in front of the color spectrum coming out of the first prism. And then that light turned into white light again. So all the colors you see make up white light. So in order to study color, we would also have to study light. So what is light? Well, light is both a wave and a particle. And visible light is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So in here we have our electromagnetic spectrum. And as you can see, white light or visible light consists only a narrow portion of that electromagnetic spectrum there and that's the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see from the left we have the gamma rays the x-rays and the ultraviolet rays and then after that uh, to the right would be the infrared rays the radar fm tv wave short waves and the am waves visible light consists only a very narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And visible light consists of your color spectrum here, from the uh, deep violets to the purples and blues and cyans, greens, yellows, oranges, and your reds. So your high energy colors would be the blues and the purples, and your low energy colors would be the oranges and the reds. And so if color is light, then how come objects appear to have color? Well, in order to understand that, we would have to study how color and light behaves. This part here is red. Well, it's not exactly red. You see, as light travels from the source, it bounces off objects and enters your eye and that's how you perceive color and the way it bounces off objects will determine your perception of what color that object is so let's say i have a white object and the sun is em emitting white light well a white object would bounce back all the colors of the white light so you would still see white but a red object would absorb all the other colors except red. And that red color will bounce back and enter your eye and you will see red. So a red object isn't necessarily red. It just means that that object is made up of material that absorbs all the other colors and only lets that color red to bounce back and enter your eye. Okay, so we have our color wheel, and this is the traditional color wheel. In here, we have our primaries, the yellow, red, and blue, and then our complementaries to that would be green for red, orange for blue, and purple for yellow. So this makes up our uh, traditional color wheel. But this is not the true color wheel and why is that well first we'll look at our color spectrum okay 
So if we are going to make a color wheel, we're going to have to create the color wheel from this color spectrum. And the way we do that is that we connect one end of the color spectrum to the other to make it loop back to itself and create a wheel. And this is what we get. Now how to get the primaries, our primaries? Well, let's look at our color spectrum. What are the most dominant colors of our color spectrum? Well, you have our blues, our greens, and our reds, right? So those are the true primaries. You have the red, the blue, and the green. And this makes up our color wheel, our additive color wheel. So why is it called the additive color wheel? Well, if you mix all those colors together, you will get white light. And this is why we have the RGB color system that is being used by your monitor. Okay, so what about cyan, yellow, and magenta? Well, this makes up our subtractive color wheel. And it is called the subtractive color wheel because when you mix all those colors together, you get black. And this is the color system that is being used for printing and for pigment when you do traditional painting. So these are the colors that you are actually using. When you're mixing paint, you are actually using the subtractive color wheel. Okay, so what are the elements of color? You have hue, value, and saturation. So for example, I have this swatch of light violet here. Well, that color has value. It has a saturation level and it has a hue. So we're going to have to take a look at the elements of color here. So what is hue? Well, hue is actually what you call color. When you say red or blue or green or yellow, you're actually referring to hue. So what you call color is actually hue. Okay, so what is value? Well, value is the brightness or darkness of a color. So in here we have the gray and we have the value scale of that gray from light to dark. And next would be red. Well, you can also have a value of light red or dark red. For yellows also, you can also have light yellows and darker yellows. Same goes for any other color. So what about saturation? Well, saturation is the purity of the color. And this is very important. Look at this here. We have the color yellow here. And as we decrease in saturation, we will start to see the value of that color in grayscale. But same goes for red here. As we decrease the saturation of that color, we start to see the value of that red there. Same goes for this purple here. As we decrease in saturation, we, we start to see the value of that uh, purple there. So. As you decrease in saturation, the value of that color starts to emerge. This color has the same value as this gray. So saturation is the purity of the color. So if you say the color is saturated blue, that means that the purity of the color is really high towards blue. And here we have our color wheel and as we go inside this color wheel here the colors start to get neutral and neutral until it turns gray so why is that well we have what you call complementary colors and complementary colors are colors residing on opposite sides of the color wheel so in here we have our red and green and if you mix those two colors together, they start to meet at the center and you would get gray. So a complementary color 
is a very good way to neutralize the colors that you are using. Let's say, for example, you are seeing really saturated reds in your painting. Well, a way to neutralize that color would be using a complementary color of that red and painting over that, mixing over that, so that you are neutralizing that red. And what happens is that that red starts to transition into a grayer or a more neutral red. Okay, so color temperature. So in our color, we we also have what we call warm and cool colors. So in here we have our color wheel, and it is divided in the middle by a line. And on the left side here we have our cool colors, and on the right we have our warm colors. What are our warm colors? So these are the colors that we would associate with、um, warmness or hot temperature. So you have your warm greens, your yellows, your oranges, your reds, and then your pinks and、uh, your warm violets. Okay, and then on the cool side, we have our cool greens, cyans, our blues, our purples, and then our cool violets. So, what is the use of color temperature? Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So, in this image to the top right here, we have、uh, an image of a sort of like a city, and it's made up mostly of warm colors. And it sort of looks really lively and comfy and inviting, and、um, just you know, somewhere you would want to be. Like it feels really homey. It feels warm. And、uh, now look at the bottom left image here. This is an image、uh, painted mostly with、uh, cool colors. And look at the image here. It looks very cold and、um, very isolated. And、uh, It、looks a bit hostile. It doesn't look like a very nice place to be in. So let's take a look at another couple of examples here. So in here we have colloquies of the courtroom from the movie Lilo and Stitch. So at the top here we have our warm color palette, and at the bottom we have our cool color palette. So let's take a look at the upper image here. Now this image uses warm colors. But look at this image. It doesn't seem like a very nice courtroom to be in. It looks very hostile to me. Now, look at the bottom image here. Now, it's using very cool colors, and it seems like a better-looking courtroom to me than the upper one here. So, using a certain color temperature can significantly impact the way your scene is perceived by the audience. So let's take a look at another example here. So in here we have the same scene, but using different color temperatures. Now let's take a look at the upper image here. It looks very warm and and comfy and inviting. You'd probably want to take a stroll there through the woods with your pet dog, or you know,、um, lie down against one of those trees and read a book. Take a look at the. Bottom image here, that looks very hostile to me. It's like if you take a stroll there, somebody could, you know, attack you from the shadows. So it doesn't look very inviting. It looks very, very、uh, scary. So the way you use color temperatures can、uh, significantly impact the way your scene is going to be、um, perceived by the audience. So what about using? Warm and cool colors together in one image. So in here we have three examples.、So、using warm and cool colors for dynamic images. Look at this image here. So th the first one is from Brother Bear, and、um, look at that. On the lit side, he is using warm colors, and on the shadowed side here, he is using cool colors. And looks it makes for a very dynamic image. It looks very inviting. And it looks really fantastic and really magical there. Now, the next image is from five centimeters per second. This is from、um, Makoto Shinkai, 
uh, one of my favorite animated directors and I encourage you to look at uh, his works because he uses mostly this kind of, of color scheme using warm and cool colors together and, it, it, and he does this really superbly in his anime uh, backgrounds in here we have warm colors uh, representing uh, sunlight and in the shadowed side we have our cool colors and it makes for a really dramatic uh, kind of effect here so uh, the next image is from a poster for Legend of the Guardians and it's the same as the other images in that in the lit side we have our warm colors and on the shadowed side here on the cliff and on the uh, mountains there on the shadowed side of the mountains we have our cool colors so it looks really dynamic it looks really really uh, dramatic and beautiful okay so so all this sort of um, brings to mind an old uh, traditional painting rule where if the lit side is warm the shadowed side would be cool and if the lit side is cool the shadowed side would be warm so let's take a look at this rule in real life so let's take a look at the image at this image here so warm light is hitting the sand and on the shadowed side we have really cool colors and the reason for this is that warm light coming from the sun is hitting the lit side that's why it looks warm especially the uh, bushes here they look pretty warm and then on the shadowed side we have light coming from the sky the sky is blue so that's why our shadow side is being lit by the sky so it is cool especially on the uh, big shadow here we have really cool colors there okay <clears throat> now let's talk about color relativity so what is color relativity well to put simply color relativity is the tendency for our eyes to perceive color differently depending on what color is surrounding it. I've got two swatches here and they're both surrounded by two different colors. Now look at these two swatches here. Do you think they are the same color? Yes or no? If you answered no then you are wrong. Both swatches are the same color but it is because of color relativity that you perceive them to be different. So perceived color is relative to its environment. So we tend to perceive color differently depending on what color is surrounding it. So uh, here's another example, grayscale swatch. And look at the two swatches here. Now, do you think they are the same color? Do you think they are the same shade of grey? If you answered yes, then you are correct. So color relativity doesn't just work on hue, it also works on value. So in here, our swatch it looks lighter and in here our swatch looks darker. And why is that? It's because in here the swatch is surrounded by a darker gray value and that makes it pop out as a lighter value while in here the swatch is surrounded by a lighter gray value that's why it looks much much darker but this is just the same color this is just the same value but when surrounded by different values they look different from each other so it's the same for color here you have the same swatch of color but when they are surrounded by different colors they appear to be quite different in value there and also a little bit different in hue so it doesn't just work in value it also works on the color temperature of a color so in here we have gray swatches surrounded by two different colors one is warm and one is cool now are these two swatches the same kind of gray 
equal, yes, they are both the same value of gray and both the same neutral gray. But when they are surrounded by different colors, warm and cool, they tend to look different. So in here, if the gray swatch is surrounded by a warm color, it tends to appear cool. While in here, when it is surrounded by a cool color, it tends to appear really, really warm. But they are both the same gray. They just appear to look different. They appear to look warmer or cooler, depending on their surrounding color. So what does this mean when we are painting? Well, it means that you can't trust, you can't exactly trust your eyes when looking at the color of a painting. Let's say you are studying from a photo or from a master or doing a master study. Well, if you say like, let's say you look at the color and you say, oh, that's cool, that's blue, that's a blue color, that's a purple color. Well, it might not be a blue color. It might just be a little bit of gray that's, that looks quite cool, so that it looks blue. So you have to um, you have to judge colors based on their surrounding colors, and not just look at the color and say, "Oh, that's orange, or that's yellow, or that's or oh, that's blue." Uh, think about the surrounding. Look at the surrounding colors and judge what color that area you you are looking actually is. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of the behaviors of light as it applies to the color of an object. So in here, I've got uh, an object, a pretty colorful object, a uh, pool ball. And um, I brought up the color picker so that you would see what I'm talking about. So in here, we have a pretty uh, saturated uh, color uh, yellow for the ball, but it's not really entirely yellow. And here I'm going to show you that as a color goes into the uh, the shadowed side, it, it will start to get more and more saturated. And as it starts to go towards the highlight, it will start to get less and less saturated. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here. And I want you to pay close attention to this handle here. And so I'm just going to uh, explain for a bit. So this is in Photoshop. and. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this before. I've, I'm sure you've, uh, for those who've used Photoshop, know uh, how this thing works. So, if you go from left to right, that's uh, your saturation. So you go left, that's zero saturation of the color, and then as you go towards the right, you have full satur saturation of the color. And then from the bottom to the top would be your value. So the darkest values at the bottom, and then the lightest values are at the top. Okay, and this is your uh, color spectrum here. So, so watch closely this handle as I go and pick the colors of this object from the highlight to the shadows. So, <coughs> I'll start from the highlight, and as you can see, it starts a bit. It starts out quite desaturated, and then you start to see it go from desaturated, desaturated color from the highlight and then it starts going to highly saturated color as it goes towards the shadows there in fact as it gets here it will start it will stay in a really high saturated color so the same here it will start out really desaturated and then as it goes towards the shadows it will go really really saturated and what that's one of the properties of light that you need to be aware is that as the colors go towards the shadows your colors should start to go really really saturated and as they go towards highlights you will get lesser and lesser saturation of your color and also notice that as I go towards towards the shadows if I hold my pen here and just drag over from the highlight towards the shadows notice this handle here now this is another property of light that you need to be aware of 
is that as light goes from the highlights to the shadows, as the color goes from the highlights to the shadows, if it's a warm color, this is a yellow color. So if it's a warm color, it tends to go towards red as it approaches the darkest parts of that object. So from the highlights, it will be really desaturated until it goes to the really saturated colors of that yellow there. And then after that, it just starts to fall towards a really dark value. And then you start to see this handle here going towards red. And you will see it very clearly as I scrub here from the highlights towards the shadows. You'll see that handle there just scrubbing from yellow to red. And there's a property of light there. So as the light loses energy as it goes towards the shadows, it will start, the colors will start to go towards red there, if it's a warm color. If it's a cool color, it will start to go towards blue. So if it's, it started out from cyan, then it will start to go towards the blues. So it's, pretty, it's, it's quite the same for warm and cool. So if you have a warm color, if you start from a warm color, it will start to go towards the reds. And if you are starting with a cool color, it will start to go towards the blues and the deep blues as you go towards the shadows. Okay. So now I'm going to go through um, uh, how you can go about uh, studying color from uh, your photo references or from your favorite paintings. So um, when you look at a color, the first thing that you should assess is what value that color is. Does it belong to the lit side of the scene or an object or does it belong to the shadowed side? And then after that is determine if that color is warm or cool. So let's look at this image here. Well, this one in this image, we mostly see a lot of greeny stuff. And if you look here, on the uh, lid side of the scene, we can pretty much tell that it has a lot of uh, warm greens, almost already going towards the yellows there. And then as you go into the uh, shadowed side, you start to get all these. Uh, cool greens there and some of these are actually also um, being lit by the sky so they are much much cooler so on the uh, lit side here we have our yellow greens really really warm greens and then as you go to the shadowed side here we get our cool greens okay so next example is this image here so in this image the artist is using both warm and cool colors, so he's using warm colors for uh, the lit side, so where the sun is hitting the mountain and the cliffs there, uh, he's using warm colors. You have the yellows there, also the reds. And then in the shadowed side, he's using really, really cool colors over the purples and the blues, because the shadowed side is being dominated by the sky, which is blue, so we would have uh, really cool colors there Okay, so here's another image So for this one the, the dominant color are cool colors and He's using warm colors for the lights coming from underneath those plants there and It gives you that really really kind of a really dynamic vibe to the uh, scene makes it look really interesting makes those uh, plants or settlement kind of things there really pop out and um, attract the uh, viewers attention okay so so um, here's another example so in this image still applying the same rules uh, for the um, lit side he's using warm colors and on the shadowed side and here around this areas here and uh, here around here so on the shadowed side, you get really cool colors there because it's illuminated by the sky. And then in here, what about here? In this area around here in the foreground, it's in shadow and 
the main source of light hitting these uh, rocks or these objects here is uh, the sky. So what color is the light from the sky? Well, it's blue. So that's why the uh, lit areas of these um, rocks, you get cool colors, these areas around here. But then, as it is with the rules, if you have a cool color for the uh, lit side, then you would have warm colors for the shadowed side. So that's why in here we have really, really warm colors for the shadowed areas there because our main light lighting up this area is cool and that's why the lit side looks cool but on the shadowed side it looks pretty warm there even around here so these are contrasting quite a bit in here you have an area that's mainly lit by a cool blue color from the sky but in here you have an area that is directly being hit by the sun so that's why the light hitting those areas there are quite warm and then on the shadowed side it looks really cool next is this image right here so um, the setting is uh, sunset on rocky formations there that are covered in snow it's pretty much um, warm light bathing these um, uh, rocky formations there and then in the uh, shadowed side we have cool colors so on the lit side you have warm colors the yellows and the reds and then in the um, shadowed side you get our cool colors the cool grays and then the purples there okay so another example of um, dynamic uh, use of color here so in here we have a really warm light bathing the scene here and as you can see it's really really warm and then on the shadowed side you have really cool colors there the the cool colors from the sky is illuminating the shadowed side so you get really really cool colors there and then the surfaces that are, are bathed in the warm light of the sun are quite warm really really warm so here's another example of the same rule we have warm light bathing the scene as you can see we have like re we have really saturated colors here but as you can see he's still applying the behavior of light as it uh, applies to color in that again he's using warm colors for the lit side there and here really really warm colors for the lit side but then on the shadowed side here you have this really really cool colors there even around here and here and here on the shadows yeah even even these areas around here have really cool gray colors okay so this image is done by KK Kotaki and uh, is one of my favorite concept artists out there so this is a great example of how colors actually look like when they are coming from a really bright light source so let's say the sun or um, a light bulb most beginners when they try to paint uh, the sun or a light bulb or any other any kind of light source they tend to just put in a really bright color of yellow or red or blue but it doesn't work like that and the reason for that is that as an area gets brighter and brighter it starts to go to white and it also depends on whether the color of your light is cool or warm so for this instance our light is uh, coming from a fire breathing dragon and it's you know a concentrated really high energy uh, warm light and as you can see in the middle there if i'm going to color pick this area it's really really white there 
as you can see it's it's really white and then as I go away from that it starts to go towards yellow and then starts to go towards the oranges and the reds so this is what I talked about before in that as you go from the highlights towards the darker areas of the image is that if it's a warm color it will start out really really desaturated and kind of white but then it starts to go towards the color of that light because this is fire it starts out going towards the yellows and then to towards the oranges there and then towards the reds there if it was a cool light it would start out in the white as well and then go towards a really saturated cyan and then starts to shift towards the blues okay so that's for our discussion about color and from now on I want you guys to look at your reference images and try to understand the colors that are being used in the image uh, what value is the color what uh, color temperature is the color that they're using so um, for an object it can change from the from the highlights to the shadows an object's color can change drastically from a warm color of green let's say for a leaf it can be a warm color of green for the highlights and then turn into a really cool green for the shadowed side okay so I want you to um, also uh, be aware of color relativity in your image in that sometimes when you're studying an image um, some areas can look quite cool but, and, and blue but they're not actually blue it's just that they are surrounded by really warm colors that's why they appear blue they might probably just be gray so I want you guys to practice looking at colors in your images and try to accurately determine what color that area is and also all the things that we discussed here are pretty much just the basics of color and color theory is a very very broad subject which I cannot possibly uh, cover in one sitting but um, these are the important basics and if you just keep this in mind it will help you a lot when you are painting your scene so have fun studying your reference images enjoy painting and have a good day